Yo, what is good? What is good? Today we are here with a competitive video. I'm going to be talking about the top 10 best, strongest Gigantamax users. Yes, I wish I could have done this video a little bit sooner. The mechanics banned now, which kind of sucks. But you know what? You can still use Gigantamax on Wi-Fi. You can still do whatever with it. I mean, it's legal in other tiers, Ubers, whatever the case is. I figured I would give the list of the top 10 strongest Gigantamax users, in my opinion. I've tested all these Pokemon a lot. I've had a lot of fun with them. The last month or so of me playing this game, while these kids were on the ladder clicking slack off with Hippowdon for 400 games straight, I was busy checking out every single Gigantamax Pokemon, searching for the strongest one. And I was able to find, you know, that there are definitely 10 viable ones, if not more, and that, you know, they're really fun to use. So, honestly... We can just hop right into this. I got 10 of them, so this should take a little bit. But the 10th one is one I just recently did, in fact. It's Charizard. So I really do think Charizard is the 10th best. I'll show you the set I used. So I used Hurricane, Flamethrower, Solar Beam, Focus Blast with Choice Scarf. Choice Scarf was really nice uh, because this thing sits at a speed tier right above Darmanitan. Um, so you're able to Scarf, kill that thing with Flamethrower, turn one. And just in general, it has really hard moves to switch into. Like, even though my team... Um, you know, it has defensive enough answers in, like, Corsola and Hydreigon and stuff like that. A Scarf Charizard, if I played against that, would be a big threat. And Specs would be a huge threat, too. Firing off Fire Blasts and, like, uh, Hurricanes and all that stuff. Hydreigon and Charizard can't really switch into that that well. Uh, basically, like, Fire types in general are always really strong. And this thing is able to get through Toxapex thanks to Max Airstream. In my video where I used Charizard, there was one Toxapex I beat because I Hurricaned him on the Switch. And then the next turn, I went for Max Airstream, knocked him out. And then Charizard was, like, good to go. I had plus one speed. Um... Yeah, this thing can be a giant threat. And honestly, I was pretty impressed by it. The other set you could root is, run is definitely Specs. I saw this guy running Specs Overheat Hurricane, and that was a huge threat too. Hurricane is able to Oko stuff like Dragapult, and just in general, it's very, very strong. Charizard, really, there's not a lot of uh, ways to go with it, I feel like. I mean, you could run Life Orb or something, um, and do like an all-out attacking set, sure. But honestly, I feel like you could just run Dynamax then. Um and get the solar power boost this thing really excels on sun teams i feel like if you run it alongside torkoal or whatever uh because you know you can't really set up the sun because it's z fire move is not max flare sorry not z fire move it's g max move is not uh max flare that sets up the sun it's actually uh i forgot what it's called like inferno or something like that wildfire g max wildfire and it makes the opponent's team take damage for the next five turns which is very good um, but in general, yeah, Charizard, it really impressed me in the video I did with it. I feel like it put in quite a bit of work. And I figured, you know, it was definitely worthy of being the 10th best mod. This is the team I have with it. Um, the CTC passed me. Pretty fun one. Uh, we have Avala, Galissapod, you know, double priority. Course low with some rocks. So it's a nice team, but Charizard really put in the work when I needed it to. Um, so yeah, if you're running Charizard, you gotta have a spinner like Avala. Absolutely. Some type of hazard removal for sure. But yeah, that's basically Charizard. Not much else to say about it. Scarf Respect's definitely the way to go in my opinion. And let's go to the ninth best Pokemon. So the ninth best one is this guy, or Beetle. I haven't even uploaded with him yet, but, 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 um, or maybe I will upload by the time this video goes up. But regardless, yes, or Beetle. Now this Pokemon is really whack. I've got to be honest with you. I had a lot of pain using this Mon. I felt it very hard to get uh, a lot of things done with this Pokemon. Its stats are pretty weird. I mean, its defenses are good, but like its typing is not that good. It's weak to rocks. It's weak to fire. So weak to like it doesn't have a lot of good resistances either um it gets like like its defense is base 110 but that's not that good when you still die to like most stuff uh its special attack is very bad so this is the set i ran ctc gave it to me life warp sticky web calm mind psychic bug buzz but for those of you who don't know the thing with orbital is that it's g max move what's that move called hold on we're about to go find it what's that move called where is it where is it G Max Gravitas. Okay, this is it. So for those of you who don't know, um, basically it changes the gravity. So it sets up a gravity with uh, G Max Psychic, and then that lets Excadrill under the sand go crazy with the Life Force. So that was a really awesome tech. Um, we had like weakness policy set up Tyranitar, uh, AV Conkeldur. You know, this was a really cool tech. So Orbital can actually set up the uh, the gravity, and then Excadrill. You know, a lot of teams use Corviknight as their Excadrill counter, and Corviknight's on like every team these days. You can fuck shit up. So this is a very potent core. Or Beetle Excadrill. That's honestly the only reason I think Or Beetle's good because you can pair it with a Pokemon as good as Excadrill, and the support that it can give to something as good as Excadrill is just so good that you really can't pass up on it. So, yeah, this is a pretty interesting team. I think the Clef was Healing Wish Sash, some crazy stuff, Resto Chest. But Or Beetle, yeah, he's definitely really weak. The 80 base special attack is like beyond bad. Like, it's, it's really bad. You can't kill anything at plus one. Like, nothing on this team would die at plus one. Not even T-Tar. That shit would eat it up with ease. Um, so that's something you gotta think about. 
But, I mean, maybe Conk would die. But, like, no, Conk would actually live for sure. Just max with F. But, I mean, the defenses are cool. It's interesting. The ability to set up gravity is really clutch, especially with something as good as Excadrill. But, um, yeah, that's basically that. What did I have next as number eight on the list? Ah, yes, Colossal. Now, this is a mon I never expected to like, but I really, like, am in love with. I think this mon is very excellent. It's eighth on the rankings just because, like, there are seven that are definitely superior, but this thing is really good. It's not like, don't think, like, oh, shit, it's only eighth on this list. It's probably bad. This thing is really good. So this is a set I consider to be the best one. Uh, heavy Duty Boots, Stone Edge, Flare Blitz, Earthquake, Spikes. So Colossal is really good at just being able to put up spikes. Um... A nice thing about its typing is that it resists fairy type moves, so stuff like Clefable is usually scared out by this thing. Its attack is pretty bad, it's base 80 just like Orbeetle, but for some reason this thing hits a whole lot harder. Maybe because Stone Edge, Flare Blitz, and Earthquake are all nice moves, unless you like run into Seismitoad. Um, but in general, I mean, they're pretty nice moves to hit stuff with, and like, even though um, its attack is low, it can still chip like a Clefable enough to where it has to recover. Or you can Earthquake switch on Toxapex, you know, make them force recover, get some initiative. And then spikes, of course, is great because it just gives you another option to run spikes besides like Ferrothorn. And you know this thing can get up spikes pretty easily. And its G Max move, uh, G Max Volcalith, this it's a very powerful rock based move, 130 or 140, I don't remember. And it similar to Charizard's G Max uh, Wildfire, it basically makes the opponent's team take damage for the next four to five turns, which is awesome. Um, and the ability Steam Engine, so you get plus six speed off a of water or fire type move. Well, even though this thing is four times weak to fire, when you go for the uh, Gigantamax, you live like every Scald because its its stats are great. 396 HP, 216 speed F, that's pretty damn solid. Like, you can live a Scald from, like, anything quite easily. Get plus six speed and then go on a sweep um, a lot of the time. Like, really, I had some, like, weird sweeps with this thing. Very unexpected sweeps, but it, like, worked out because it was just strong enough and bulky enough to just, you know, put some work in. And then it had 500 speed. I think this set, when you hit max speed, it's 500 points. So it's pretty, it's pretty nice, man. Um, but yeah, this is the set I ran. I really don't know what else you can run. You can run Rapid Spin, for sure. But this is the set I had the most success with. Um, yeah, you could probably run Rapid Spin over Earthquake. But it's nice to hit Tox Specs a little bit. And just like, I don't know, have this move, I guess. Yeah, you can definitely run Rapid Spin, though. I used a team where I ran Rapid Spin, but it wasn't G-Max. But yeah, Colossal is definitely up there. Eighth best to me. This set is really good. Very slept on. Um, I think Colossal did not get the love it deserved in this generation just because there were more G Max guys out there, but like he was really good. I felt like this thing really was amazing. Uh, I've really spammed it a lot in my streams and everything. I probably played at least like 80 games with it um, in like a week, but let's move on to Scent Scorch. So, this is the first Scent Scorch team I used with a coil Scent Scorch. I really didn't like this set, it really didn't put in work, so I'm not going to suggest it. This is the one I used that I had the most success with that my boy Mimolet passed me. So this is max speed, max attack, adamant nature, heavy duty boots because a fire type with heavy duty boots is just like, it's just a match made in heaven, bro. You don't got to take those annoying rocks damage. So fire lash, power whip, thunder fang, knockoff. Um, this set was cool because uh, Center Scorch's G-Max move is G-Max Centiferno and it traps the opponent. It's like Magma Storm. So a lot of times they go into Toxapex, you trap it, then you can go for Max Lightning, get rid of that threat, you're done. It's great, it's excellent. Uh, knockoff, just a good support move, and it becomes Max Darkness, which lets you one-hit KO Dragapult. Like this team, for example, could really get the business from a G-Max sent to Scorch. Like, easily, easily. This thing gets messed up, this thing gets messed up. Hydreigon actually lives, because there's no uh, bug move, but say I had a bug move instead of like Max Lightning. Rotom gets fucked up. Dragapult fucked up and nothing can kill it because it's actually quite bulky. This thing's stats are actually quite good because its HP is awesome. Yeah, Scent Scorch can really put on the hurt. Um, I feel like in some matchups it's pretty bad, but more often than not, like, you need to run Thunderfang in my opinion. The set I ran before was like Coil, Double Stab, Power Whip, walled by every pex. It was just awful. It was just awful. But, uh, you know, the G Max move, the Lightning or whatever, the Dynamax Lightning, it's, it's really nice. It's really nice. It's able to take out pecs. Um, in two hits, and then like honestly, if your team is able to get rid of Toxapex, uh, like an offensive team, then you're usually in a good spot if you're able to kill the opponent's Toxapex. It's really hard to lose Toxapex because most teams that rely on Toxapex like rely on it to check quite a few Pokemon because it's good at doing that. But yep, I had Scent Scorch at number six uh, or number seven, right? Yeah, number seven. So let's get on to number six, and that was Snorlax, I believe. Yes, so Snorlax I think was really good. 
Um, honestly, I feel like Colossal, Center Scorch, and Snorlax were all very close. Um, I feel like on any given day, I might even say Colossal is better than the other two. But I feel like these two have the ability to sweep harder. So Snorlax is pretty interesting. This is the set I ran the most. Curse, Rest, Body Slam, Darkest Lariat, Chesto Berry. With the G-Max Replenish, which brings your Chesto Berry back. Now, the thing I found out about Snorlax is that it's not 100% that you get back the berry. I think Showdown had it coded incorrectly to where you always get your berry back. I think in-game it's 50% of the time, which means... Snorlax is definitely not that good, and it's definitely below Colossal and Center Scorch, if that's the case. But when I used it on the ladder, it was 100% of the time you get your Chesto Berry back. So I felt like I was I was resto chesting like two times in a game. Um, Snorlax is good. I mean, there are some matchups which are horrible, like versus Haze Tox Specs, you're screwed. Um, but I mean, if you paralyze the thing, you can beat it, right? With Body Slam, so that's one thing. Ferrothorn is really tough as well. Corviknight is really, really annoying as well. Um, if you're Leech Seated, otherwise Darkest Lariat will beat that thing. But I mean... It's interesting, man. I think Snorlax is good no matter what. I think even a uh, the same set with leftovers and then just regular Snorlax is also very, very potent. Um, but this is just kind of like more of a novelty to test out the Gigantamax feature. So this is a set I ran. I've also run Choice Bandit Snorlax, but not like G-Max. I mean, yeah, I think Snorlax is just good in general. In Gen 8, honestly, I think it's really worth trying out. Um, I can show you guys my banded one. It's not Dynamax. I mean, it's not G-Max. It's Dynamax. Um, but I don't really Dynamax much. It's this one. Someone gave me this team. It's quite good. It's quite good, honestly. It's not even max attack, but it keeps quite a bit of spadef. And with these uh, four moves, you're actually able to put quite a lot of damage on teams. So, yeah, just something to think about. Snorlax is, you know, not to be slept on. But those are the bottom five. Now, let's get into the top five. So, this I had to think about a little bit. The top three were easy, but the five and four I had to think about. So, I put Dreadnought as the fifth best one. Now, the reason being is because it's a uh, G-Max rock move. I remember I said G-Max water in the rain video. Sorry about that. It's G-Max water move. Um, sorry, it's G-Max rock move puts up the rocks. Wait, no, no. It is the G-Max water move that does it. Oh my God, bro. I'm tweaking. I'm tweaking. Sorry. The G-Max water move, not the rock one. The G-Max water move is the one that sets up the stealth rock, right? So yeah, this thing is a big threat just because it's quite strong. Um, its speed is decent enough in the rain. It's 494, which isn't bad. The coverage is amazing. Coverage is really amazing. And just the ability to put up rocks and get a kill, I think is really good. Um, that's, a, that's basically the bottom line. I mean, it's just like your classic rain sweeper. This shit's basically Kabutops. This is literally what Kabutops ran. Swords Dance, Liquidation, Stone Edge, Superpower. Nothing crazy. You know what I mean? Um, so I just feel like, yeah, it's nothing crazy. Just the ability to put up rocks and in an attack is really good to me. You can even forgo running a stealth rocker sometimes if you wanted to. So that's really it. I mean, there's not really much to say about Dreadnought. It's a good sweeper. It's great under the rain, but like any Swift Swimmer is good under the rain. You can put Bear Scoot on this thing, get the same results. It's just nice that Dreadnought is able to put up the rocks. Let me see if I have another team with this guy. I feel like I only have one, though. Yeah, no, I have this one as well. Same set, probably, right? Yeah, I mean, as far as moves go, there's not really a lot of variation. You're going to run these every time. Um, it gives you the best coverage. Superpower lets you hit ferrothorn and seismitoad yeah i mean it's good it's, it's just like it's like a swift swim rain guy there's not much thought behind it it's just you know putting in the work so yeah let's go on up to number four i really don't have too much to say about dreadnought so with number four we have gengar so hold on let me wait wait, wait let me go to my gen 8 and then go to gengar so g max gengar this is a set i ran the most Nasty Plus, Shadow Ball, Sludge Wave, Focus Blast at Kessler Berry. So this berry lets you take half from Ghost Type Attacks. This allows you to live Dragapult Spec Shadow Ball after you G-Max. And you can also take Gengar, I mean, Opposing Gengar Shadow Ball or uh, Aegis Last Shadow Sneak. So it's pretty interesting. There's a lot of ghost moves and ghosts in this tier. So this is a pretty nice berry um, for those. But yeah, Nasty Plus 3 Attack meant to just shit on balance. Um, yeah, I mean, Gengar's kind of slow. It's 110 base speed which is slow in a metagame with Dragapult and Cinderace and shit, like, this team would destroy Gengar, for sure. I just go into Mandibuzz, you turn out into, like, Cinderace, blow that shit up, like, whatever. It's, it's, I don't know. I even have Token tomorrow. That's, like, a little flex pick. That shit is garbage. But, yeah, this is the set I ran. I mean, there are other sets you can run. I want to see if I ran another set. I feel like I did. Yeah, I ran Specs on this one. Specs Trick 3 Attack. That one was decent, too. Um, then there was also this one guy showed me a set. It was like hypnosis or something, some crazy shit. Hypnosis, nasty plot, 
blunder policy so that you like hypnosis miss then you trap something with your g max move and then you hypnosis them sleep them nasty plot up and then it was like some demonic set gengar is pretty good though just by virtue of being like gengar the stats and moves are always good that threat is big but people don't use it that much because it's just like i don't know i feel like if you're using g max why even waste your time on gengar just like dynamax something else these aren't like that's the thing it's not like an optimal pokemon to g max most of the time i feel like i feel like what it does for your team isn't that good compared to the others but by virtue of being gengar it's better than those pokemon if that makes sense um that's just how it is let's see let's see okay so that's basically the top seven now let's get into the top three so next i have a true fan favorite a true goat that's right we have copper roger copper roger swag agent roger this thing is the boss the boss yeah honestly i think this thing's top three i mean like it loses to pokemon like rotom heat which i've now like gotten huge but besides that it's hella good so stealth rock heavy slam heat crash power with this is the set i ran the most sash lead but there's hella copper rogers you can run and i'll talk about that so if you guys don't know and you should know uh this thing's g max move sets up a steel type stealth rock and it can also set up regular stealth rock so you can effectively have two pairs of stealth rock up i feel like that's such a boon for an offensive player like me who's always double switching around to make sure my opponent never gets an initiative never spins away my hazards or kills my momentum <clears throat> i feel like in so many games if i'm somehow able to put both rocks up it's so over for my opponent like i'll, I'll like i'll make sure they never get the hazards off because i'll like play aggressively enough and then if you have to keep switching in your mon and taking two rounds of hazards it's like it's end game dude like you're finished you're finished if you have to keep taking multiple stealth rock switchings and i feel like this really is good for my offensive style of play because i'm able to get so much mileage out of it so this is a set i ran my boy anti passed me problem is your wild by toxic specs which kind of sucks and cop roger is extremely slow um but i mean it's not that bad it's cool like I i've had a lot of success with this team let me show you some other cop rogers i ran me and joey actually recorded today and he ran four attack assault vest uh with earthquake as his last move and so that's able to hit pecs we ran it in uu but you know you can apply it to ou as well um and then i had a trick room team as well that ctc passed this team was pretty crazy um yeah this thing was pretty crazy cop roger g max this thing sets up the rocks heat we had sheer force on this one heat crash rock slide earthquake really nice curvature rock slide snipes uh rotom heat ko's that shit earthquake destroys uh what's it called toxic packs stuff like that it's just it's pretty good it's pretty good i feel like i'd have to change this setup a little bit though um i don't know how though but iron head with sheer force life orb is definitely something to worry about but yeah that was another set cop roger is really good definitely don't sleep on that guy he's a complete beast complete threat honestly the goat my favorite pokemon in gen 8 r.i.p i'm smiling he's smiling down at me from heaven where he's at all right next grim snarl so grim snarl is something i decided for a while it was like top three g max i think this thing is amazing i feel like people think i overrate this thing but i think it's fucking beast this is a set i think is the best bulk up life orb i know people hate life orb because they're like oh my god what if my opponent switches around and predicts me and i'm taking all this recoil then predict right bro it's that simple other thing is when you're g max you only take five percent per turn which is like hella broken in my opinion for a 1.3 power boost it's crazy it's crazy this is a set i run bulk up g max news uh whatever dynamax starfall and then this becomes like same shit uh max guard so the reason this thing is so good is because when you gigantamax you're hella bulky first of all thanks to bulk up and natural good typing and its hp is so damn high 389 hp uh times two that's like 778 hp insane hp um so you can g max news anything and anything that lives g max news you can just max guard on next and then they go to sleep which is great the only problem is sometimes max starfall sets up misty terrain and then you can't put people to sleep which is kind of like counterproductive but the one thing i do like about grim snarl is that it's sucker punch hits hard as shit because 120 attack is really good and after you're done with your gigantamax three turns you can still counter sweep with sucker punch which is great um so yeah i've had quite a bit of success with this guy um he's good he's really good this is my favorite set g max news offensive life orb I always go on sweeps. This thing is able to Oko Toxic Pex with G Max News because of Life Orb. It's able to destroy Corviknight, all that shit. It really gets just punished. So, yeah, highly recommend using Grim Snow. This thing's the GOAT. Use this thing on your DS because Chiganamax is banned. It's over. But it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, yeah, that's that for Grim Snow. And now I reveal the GOAT. I know. I know. Some of you may have guessed, but I feel like some of you may not have. But either way, it's the most broken mon in the game, the hat. That's right, 
Hatterene with the G Max. This thing is so annoying. First of all, I'm not even going to put specs because that set's not even good. This is the set that beats every team. This one right here. Oh my god, bro. This set is impossible to defeat. Hold on, let me make it like quiet. Trick room edition. Dude, this set is an absolute menace to deal with. The fact that it sets up terrain, even though terrain got nerfed, it's not 1.5 anymore, it's 1.3. Hatterene takes no prisoners. Max Flare destroys Corviknight, destroys uh, Aegislash, is finished. Max Fairy move, Max Psychic move. Like, dude, teams are getting peeled by Hatterene. And this thing is so bulky. It's so bulky for no reason. Its HP sucks, but you G-Max it, and then it's like, oh shit, it refuses to die. This thing is a problem. And then Draining Kiss recovering HP. And then I forgot which... I know the move confuses. I just forgot what it's called. G-Max Smite. Yeah, so then you confuse your opponent, which is hilarious. Absolutely hilarious that they decided this was the move to use. It's it's something, man. Hatterene is very hard to deal with. It's honestly the Pokemon I hate running into the most in this game. As you guys can tell from like all my videos where I complain about it, it's just damn good. It's the bottom line. It's damn good. This is the set I ran. You can run Specs, I guess. But I mean, I think Offensive Trick Room is the best. Calm Mind is quite good as well. You can run Calm Mind too. Like Calm Mind, like Leftovers or whatever. Yeah, and then this set is like... And you can run Bulkier. And then that thing is so annoying to deal with because you're draining, kissing all your HP back. The hat is always good. The hat is always a good choice. I need to really give this thing some attention and use it. Because every time I use it, I have no success. But then it's used against me and it's oh fucking the club up left and right. But this is basically my top 10 Gigantamax Pokemon list. I know the vid's a little late because the shit's banned, but like, you know, I figured I'd make the vid. I did basically only play with G-Max Mons for the last month. I haven't been using standard at all. So, um, I mean, I have some standard teams, but for the most part, I've been testing out new stuff. So, I mean, it was fun, though. I had a blast using all these guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the vid. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with the list, you disagree, what you think, your favorite G-Max, all that stuff. We reminiscing out here, man. RIP G-Max. But I'll see you guys later. Peace.